I grew up as a kid uh, looking to the stars. Not necessarily did I understand that that information was going through a filter. When I see the photos, all I see is these photos believing that this is my opportunity to look over the shoulder of the star, you know, in the trenches and see what they do. Not realizing that this is now already gone through a filter and the filter has been touched by the expectation or the highly idealized vision of what an editor or a person who'd been delegated the responsibility to get the great photo and have the great shoot thought would be important um, and realize how that influences what I saw. You know, if the great photo shoot and the great photos in their mind was represented by hoisting these huge poundages looking incredibly veiny and, and, and you know, over the top, exaggerated, muscular, in great condition, the message I got was that they look like this all year round and this is what it looks like in the trenches when he goes to the gym in his neighborhood and his location and just goes and works out. I don't recognize that it's him on location with the great lighting, with the great coming through this filter. I couldn't see, I couldn't recognize the filter. So in short, I would be influenced to think the same way. Every day is a sunny day. Every day the athlete's in shape and looking like he just tore out of a Flex magazine, you know. And every day, um, you know, he's hoisting these huge poundages. And if I am going to aspire to look and be like that, then every day for me has to be that. Not realizing that every day for even the subject is not that. And it could not be that and be still realistically possible for him to be the star that he is. Night is descending on Brooklyn and it's time to do legs. When we began this day in the life video and photo shoot, Kai asked us what we would like to see when we got to the gym expecting that we would want him to do a workout specifically for the camera. I told him, I don't want you to do anything special at all. In fact, I want you to ignore me completely. I want to show exactly what a real day in the life workout is like for Kai Green a little over two months before the Olympia. In keeping with the theme of this series, we went to a gym near the projects that Kai has trained in throughout his career. We were joined there by his current training partner, Julian Mundell, an aspiring natural bodybuilder whom Kai met after going to one of Ian's posing classes. For this shoot, I brought nothing but myself and my camera. No assistance, no lights. I gave them no direction and asked that nothing be done for the camera. What follows is as real a workout with a top tier bodybuilding pro as you will ever see on tape. But it is not bombastic, not loud. There is very little screaming and yelling, except when absolutely necessary, and the weights used will not blow your mind. Instead, what I witnessed this day is a very precise and scientific leg routine, which nevertheless is incredibly difficult, and which I defy anyone to match rep for rep. I will outline the workout as we go along, so that if anyone is inclined to, they can try it out for themselves. But the point is, is that what is commonly passed off in the bodybuilding world as hardcore is simply performing for the camera. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not doubting that athletes like Branch Warren or Dana Lynn Bailey are sincere when they train on film. For many, a high energy level in the gym is a necessary component of their workout routine. I'm just saying that in my experience, I haven't seen it that way. The athletes I have worked with have been for the most part quiet, thoughtful men and women, even when training very hard. I think there is a misconception about what it means to be hardcore when it comes to bodybuilding. All too often, that term is used for displays that could be better described as ego lifting. Sometimes that can be inspiring, but it can be off-putting and misleading as well. There's a lot to be said for, you know, seeing a person work at something. And when you work at something, honestly, you know, when people see that and they can see that it's just pure honesty behind it, there's there's something about that that people can get behind and support. Real people that are buying the magazines and stuff, when they see open the pages of the magazine and see Ronnie Coleman, that's a, a lifestyle that's separate and apart for me. 
So we look at that and we think that's the only way it is. But in truth, you can do it wherever you are if you just really want to get it done. So recognizing the filter, I think, helps me now make a lot more sense of this journey and why it's important for me to turn around and say to the younger aspiring stars out there, hey, dude, you know, get your form right, learn how to feel, think about your mind. Your mind is driving this whole thing. In the past, Kai has worked one-on-one -on -one very closely with his trainers. Lately, he has found that less necessary and instead has begun to mentor other promising bodybuilders. Julian herself has undergone a startling transformation and is now taking it to the next level, preparing for her first bodybuilding show. She has been very fortunate to have found Kai to guide her, and Kai obviously sees something in her which he finds inspiring. She's untapped potential, very, very raw, natural. We went from living almost sedentary to just deciding, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start exercising and just really started acting like it was an addiction. Became unsettled and didn't, wouldn't allow herself to accept anything else but that. Almost to a point of becoming neurotic, <laughs> you know, and appearing kind of weird to her friends, but to people that knew her before. I wanted to look good. I wanted to be the it girl. I wanted to be able to put on a bikini and feel good. And, 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 and that's what made me do it. Kai's the best, man. He, he takes time to teach people. I'm used to going to the gym and, you know, I'm doing bicep curls with 45 pounds. And when I met Kai, and I, I, I've never done more than 10 reps, never. When I met Kai and he said 20 reps, everything 20 reps. It made me think, can I, can I do 20 reps? And he said, it's not about the weights. You know, what is it, what is it that, that other people have that other people seemingly don't? You know, what, what is that? And then you'll see someone that just, hey man, every time you see them, they're lost in the work. Hey man, they can barely say hello to you because they, they just, they're focused, they're getting into it. You know, okay? Nothing goes by. Next thing you know, they're reaping results like, wow, what? Hey, excuse me, what, what did you do? They become the people you want to talk to. You almost want to engage them in a conversation in the locker, thinking that somehow it's going to unearth for you the secret. What, 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 what the hell is that, you know? And I'm convinced, you know, seeing people like that, that's, that's what it is, you know? I want this so bad that I'm gonna do everything I can do all day, you know, to get closer and closer to making that dream a reality. Not everybody that says it with their mouth is really, really gonna say it with their action. You know, saying it with your mouth versus saying it with your actions are two very different things. <laughs> Very, very different thing. And when you say it with your with your with your actions, I'm giving everything I have to this thing. That to say it passionately is with your mouth is it may feel really good at the time. I think this is therapy for a lot of people, more than more than most will say. I feel good. It just feel good to know that I did this. You know, I, there is no easy way. There is no quick fix. You know, and, and a lot of people need to know that. And I'm, I'm not gonna stop. I will be the best one day. I will be. And I'm not gonna stop here. I'm not. Julian's determination is admirable and she's going to need plenty of it to get through this workout tonight.
they move back upstairs for more of the workout. Kai insists on perfect form, complete extension, and complete contraction of the target muscle with every rep of every exercise. There will be no ego lifting here tonight. The weights used are not what is important. Julian begins to falter a bit during six rounds of leg extensions, but she doesn't quit, and the hardest part is yet to come. The final exercise tonight is, of course, squats. But by now, the athlete's muscles have been so taxed that there will be no need to load up the bar with photographically impressive weights. To their already tired legs, even a few plates will feel like a ton. This is where the mythology of the glistening, screaming athlete in the glossy photo shoot really crumbles and comes crashing down. Let's go. Let's go. 72. 19, let's go, 20, beautiful, beautiful. Those photographs of Kai for which he has now become famous don't even come close to the daily reality that I am witnessing here. This is a slow, methodical, precise, thoughtful, civilized workout by a modern master of muscle building. Not a crazed animalistic iron orgy. More than try to impress you with the thought of, wow, how much, well, how much weight is he moving? Or, uh, wow, how much cardio is that? Or, uh, I want you to walk away with the thought that, hey man, all of those things are built on basic fundamentals. And regardless of whether or not you have access at this time or not to, you know, bright lights, fancy cars, whether or not you even have people ready to film you today, you know, if you work hard and you use these fundamentals with the intent to humble yourself before the discipline, you do it long enough, you too can find yourself in the same position. You know, success is something that you can't attain and it doesn't have to be thought to be something so foreign. I never talk about genetics, you know, nothing in this day is built around the wonder or not of, of Kai Green's genetics. It's built around the specifics of doing certain things every day. And even when it gets difficult, if you believe that you can be successful at, at, at doing it, you have a purpose for getting these things done, then success can follow. From the outset, the purpose of this Day in the Life video series has been to show the work that it takes to be an award-winning bodybuilder, no matter how unphotogenic and mundane it might be. The more I talk about this with Kai, the more I get the impression that he is speaking to a younger version of himself while trying to help other young bodybuilders avoid some of the disillusionment that he once had about his chosen sport and offer them a more realistic expectation of what is truly involved. If I were to do a video today and show you, hey man, after winning the Arnold Classic, I brought this home or 
I bought this piece of real estate and I have this and I'm doing these wonderful things now, it would not allow people to see the truth. While working towards creating that possibility, the house wasn't pretty, you know, and the car wasn't even there. So if you're a person that is looking around you and seeing something that is not the picture that you want for your life, I've spent a 20 year career in bodybuilding to learn that you can change that. you can create the reality that you want. So if you believe that and you are able to take anything away from this video, I hope it would be that. You know, um, yes, because I'm a two-time Arnold Classic champion, um, free Mr. Olympia, coming to you from the projects, but not with the expectation of trying to just highlight, you know, a, a negative situation, but trying to highlight the fact that it doesn't matter where you're at at the time that you dare to dream, and it doesn't matter where you've been at the time that you dare to dream. Just keep dreaming and keep working. You know, be honest about getting the work done, you know, and the better picture that you're looking to create for yourself, it can be attained. You can't aspire to win the show and if you just see the show as the show that day, something separate and apart from the little each day and the little things that you do in the totality of that day that add up to an efficient day of efficient action. And stringing more days of efficient action together, ultimately you can produce the end result that you're looking for. And this is not believing in some spiritual hocus pocus and mumbo jumbo that it's nonsense. No, this is recognizing the power you have in your own hand with the decisions that you make each day. You know, you work, you work and you work and you're committed to something. And at times you don't even know what the hell you're committed to. It's just, it's just therapy. It's something to do that it's different from, you know, just being lost in your own not so nice thoughts. And it's an opportunity to think about something a lot nicer or to do something that's with more purpose than, so you do it and you, 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 you take your passion and you, you, put, you put a lot into it. And at some point you get, a, you get recognized for it. 
But with the recognition doesn't mean that the man is not with his own demons or without without his own um, without his own struggles. You know, do not if you're if you're a beginner bodybuilder, please do not take for granted that you can just leave the house with one meal and I'll get another another meal as I need while I'm out there because yeah I can just stop here I can stop there I can get I can get no because in truth you're a beginner bodybuilder you're not you're not a seasoned veteran so there's certain um there's certain things you can't get away with because you have not developed the discipline and the strength of character yet that are necessary those are skills those are tools that are necessary to be, that have to be developed. They're not, well, yeah, shortcut methods. Mm -mm. You have to, I believe the beginner bodybuilder has to go through the process of cooking his meals, each one of them, cook all of them, pack them up in a Tupperware, take them with you, go through the process of having them, opening them up, eating them. It's a little bit more difficult with each one because each one has been in Tupperware longer so it becomes more of a testament to how bad do you want it? What is your commitment? Where do you, you know, where is your true desire? I have, I have, I have a friend that, you know, has wanted to do a bodybuilding show. For, has been talking about doing a bodybuilding show for 15 years now, you know. And I'm convinced that the reason why he hasn't is because he's holding himself back. Why is he holding himself back? Because he doesn't. Yeah, straight. He um, he'll start his diet. He get excited about it. He won't cook his food though. Every time I see him, he has no food with him. Yeah. Then he'll go and get a roti, which is a traditional West Indian style uh, food prepared at a you know, a local West Indian style eatery, <laughs> you know, um, and then, you know, like I said, three weeks, two weeks is going by, still not on his diet, yo, hey, man, what happened to your diet? Well, you know, and I'm convinced that that is what happens. It's one thing to philosophize about training strategies and to, you know, uh, compare this philosophy versus another, you know, argue about, you know, how many grams versus how many grams is, is, but then there's something to be said for doing the damn thing, you know, just, just do it. You know, stop talking, stop trying to sound smart. You, know, you meet these people that want to engage you in these conversations and one-up the professional bodybuilder. Ah, I know more about nutrition. I'm, I even do. I mean, I'm not straight. I'm not where I'm at because, because I know more about nutrition than everybody else on the planet. You know, um, in fact, I dare say that the the top bodybuilding athletes that are on stage are not the men on stage, let me make it right here, because they know more about training science and nutrition than the, than the average person sitting in the audience. A lot of times the difference between the person in the audience and the person that's on stage doing it is the use of the knowledge. So success is not based on genetics. It's not based on how nice this car is. It's not based on how pretty my face is, how small my nose may need to look, or you know whether or not I'm the right complexion. I have an eight inch scar down the side of my face, but I have a camera in front of me <laughs> more often than not. <laughs> Which just means that you know if you work hard and your work is recognized, you know, the sky's the limit. So for all those people out there that think they're ugly and everything, I'm gonna hold it down for you. But more importantly, you know, you can still be a success. And for all those people that think, well, I'm too short, well, I'm gonna hold it down for you. And more importantly, you can still be a success. Find the things that, are, that you're excited about and that you can give your all and you can work really hard towards attaining it.
String those days of efficiency, efficient action together, and success can happen, even for you.